We now enter a unit in this course where we begin to consider the chemistry of the organic molecules that are relevant to biochemistry or living systems, namely the carbohydrates, lipids, amino acids, proteins. And we will start with a discussion of carbohydrates because they tend to fall, their chemistry tends to fall out nicely from the chemistry of carbonyl compounds that we have been talking about most recently. So the definition of a carbohydrate is a polyhydroxyaldehyde or ketone, or a substance that hydrolyzes to yield a polyhydroxyaldehyde or ketone. And when I say polyhydroxy, if you look at the structure on the right of your screen, you can see that there is one carbon that's an aldehyde carbon, and every other carbon in this molecule has an OH on it. So polyhydroxy means that there is an OH on every carbon. Furthermore, these are actually called carbohydrates because if you think about their molecular formula, the molecular formula of glucose here is C6H12O6. It can actually be thought of as having six carbons and six waters. And initially, before we understood what the structure of these molecules was, we thought of carbohydrates as literally being hydrates of carbon. So what's drawn on the right here is one way that carbohydrates are sometimes drawn in what's called the open chain form. But it turns out that naturally, these molecules actually exist primarily as cyclic hemiacetals or acetals. So you can see on this structure that glucose comes together to form a six-membered ring, and the carbon on the right-hand side that's indicated as such with the arrow is a hemiacetal carbon. It is a carbon that is bound to both an OH and an ether oxygen. So there are a number of ways that we can classify carbohydrates, and in this lesson, I'm just gonna go over the different classification schemes. So one classification scheme is roughly on the basis of size. So the, the whole universe of carbohydrates. So the smallest carbohydrates are what we call monosaccharides. Those are the simplest carbohydrates and they cannot be hydrolyzed. Okay, so hydrolysis of course means breaking apart with water. Monosaccharides cannot be hydrolyzed into anything small. So that's how you know you have a monosaccharide. There's not a specific number of carbons required to be a monosaccharide, but they generally have between three and six carbons. And we're gonna look at a lot of examples of these as the unit progresses. Some examples that are important that you've probably heard of are glucose, fructose, mannose, and galactose. Okay, so all of these sugars their name ends in os. Disaccharides are carbohydrates that hydrolyze into two monosaccharides. So a couple of examples of important disaccharides would be sucrose, which is made up of a molecule of glucose plus a molecule of fructose, and lactose, which is made up of a molecule of glucose plus a molecule of galactose. Trisaccharides are carbohydrates that can hydrolyze to give three monosaccharides. And then oligosaccharides are carbohydrates, my definition of at least, are ones that hydrolyze to yield between two and 10 molecules of monosaccharides. So basically anything that's in the above class, so 10 monosaccharides or fewer, are generally referred to as sugars. So they are the one class of carbohydrates. And then the other class of carbohydrates are what are called polysaccharides, which means that they are molecules that hydrolyze to yield a large number of monosaccharides. And the two examples of polysaccharides are starch and cellulose. And we will look in a few lessons at what the difference between starch and cellulose is. Okay, so now if we 
drill down and just look at monosaccharides, there are also names for monosaccharides based on the number of carbons that they have. So a three carbon monosaccharide is called a triose, a four carbon is called a tetrose, a five carbon is called a pentose, and a six carbon is called a hexose. Okay, so pent and hex are familiar to you from pentane and hexane, and then tri and tetra are the standard prefixes for three and four. We can also classify carbohydrates on the basis of what type of carbonyl group is present. Okay, so we said carbohydrates are polyhydroxyaldehydes or ketones. So if the monosaccharide contains an aldehyde, it is called an aldose. And if it contains a ketone, it is called a ketose. And then you can put these schemes together, okay? So some examples here, an aldose has an aldehyde, a ketone has a ketone, ketose has a ketone. But we could also call a C4 carbohydrate with an aldehyde an aldotetrose, or a C5 carbohydrate with a ketone, a ketopentose. Okay, so that's kind of the big picture of how we classify carbohydrates.